Hi, everybody. This is Mitch Tannenbaum. Thanks for joining me today. This is the security news update for January 22nd, 2023. Uh, starting out with security and privacy alerts. Um, it seems like we're being challenged in the application programming interface or API department. Uh, folks are using that to compromise uh, uh, services. Uh, one place we just saw that was in a a leak of 37 million customer records from T-Mobile. Uh, folks have not done a great job of securing those APIs in many cases. And uh, as a result, attackers have figured out this is a great way to break in. So um, if you uh, use an API for uh, a service that you pay for, or if you are a developer and you have provided APIs to other folks, um, now would be a good time to kind of consider the security of those things. Um, and then also in the alert department, uh, you know, did you really delete the data that you thought you deleted? Um, the Pentagon seems to forget about this from time to time. Um, and and that's also true, by the way, for many devices that are sold on eBay, there are folks that just <clears throat> buy random devices on eBay just cause. And a lot of them seem to have data on it. Um, in this particular case, uh, this is a, a device that the, we, the U.S. Army, used in the Middle East to identify friends and foes. It had a database of fingerprints and facial scans. And, um, you know, it, it was used by our soldiers to figure out whether the person they just stopped was a good guy or a bad guy, but uh, in the wrong hands. And, uh, you know, they, uh, the, the, you know, the, the uh, terrorists in the Middle East you know, this this basically is a hit list. So um, this guy bought one of these devices on eBay. Not clear why these devices are even available on eBay, but apparently they are. Um, and nobody had bothered to wipe the database. Um, you know, how many more of these devices were sold? Uh, to whom were they sold? What the results of that were? All unclear. But uh, from your perspective, what you need to worry about is your devices and, and devices, I mean, everything from a copier, fax machine, phone, tablet, you know, anything that's got memory. Um, in the reference department is kind of interesting. Um, you know, Apple, I think, has a pretty good track record in terms of, of data. But still, their privacy policies uh, is the collection uh, max out at about 70,000 words. So and Apple does collect a lot of data. Um, and more and more over time as they realize that there's money to be made. Um, so if you want to read all the Apple privacy policies or if you want to understand what data they're collecting or if you want to reduce your digital exhaust, um, read this article uh, uh, and they kind of summarize things so you don't have to go off and uh, read all 70,000 words, thank goodness. Um, uh, you know, if you are in the software business, if you are a defense contractor, if you are have to comply with the executive order on cybersecurity, uh, then you know what a software bill of materials or SBOM is. Um, it, there is a company now that claims to be able to develop an SBOM for you for software that you uh, develop uh, in under 60 seconds for free. Um, you know, pretty cool if they can actually pull that off. Obviously, they'd like to tell you other stuff, but uh, this is a pretty neat tool. Um, in the software patches department, a uh, researcher got a $107,000 bug bounty from Google for uh, reporting a backdoor, which allowed him to create a um, uh, an account on Google smart speakers. Uh, and from there go off and control the microphone, obviously turning into a wiretapping device or listening device, and also run arbitrary code on your network. So other than that, no big deal. Uh, obviously, Google thought that was a big deal to the tune of giving him $100,000 plus. Um, in the legislative and legal department, uh, this year's National Defense Authorization Act has uh, an important cybersecurity a provision and specifically this is only right now for classified programs but still there's a lot of them floating around um what it says is that uh the, the uh any uh, cloud providers have to uh, let dod have access to their systems and allow them to test the security um 
what this will probably wind up doing is being a big uh, shot in the arm for JWCC, JWIX, if, um, if, if the government actually ever influenced JWCC is the uh, uh, Pentagon's effort to duplicate what the CIA did about 10 years ago in terms of the cloud world. This is, I think, their fourth try to do that uh, in as many years. And, and, you know, hopefully this one will work. Not clear. Um, but it, it probably won't be there for another several years for sure. Um, so, um, you know, this is interesting, but it is important if you um, either offer cloud services in the classified world or uh, you use cloud services in the classified world. Uh, and also, uh, Congress has rolled back a uh, provision that restricts the use of Chinese chips uh, when the defense contractors said, uh, we can do this, but it will uh, delay uh, deliveries, um, you know, sign here, uh, and it also increased costs. So uh, as long as you're willing to accept those uh, uh, factors um, and deliveries, you know, could be delayed by years if we have to develop new chips, um, just, just sign on the dotted line here. Uh, Congress blinked and, and rolled back the provisions. Um, in the breaches department, and we always have lots of those, uh, this one's kind of a good breach. I like it. Uh, Celebrite, who makes hacking tools that they sell to, you know, a lot of folks, you know, pretty much I think anybody whose check is clear, but, um, you know, they, they claim to be a little bit more uh, circumspect than that. Um, anyway, they lost about 1.7 terabytes worth of data, which probably included most of their vulnerabilities. Uh, what that means, of course, is that the vendors whose devices are vulnerable now know how uh, Celebrite got, got in and they can go patch those holes. So that's a good thing. Uh, for Celebrite, not such a good thing because it means they need to develop, find new holes, buy new holes, whatever. Uh, and those things are always expensive and hard to do. Uh, also, uh, another company in the same business, MSAB, uh, smaller company, uh, smaller company only lost 100, 100 gigabytes worth of code. Uh, same problem though for them. So, you know, if you're a, a fan of these uh, companies that make hacking tools that allow repressive re regimes to go off and, and uh, listen to and steal data from uh, people they don't like, uh, then you won't like this. Um, if you're a law enforcement person uh, that is using it for legitimate purposes, you're not going to like it. But if you're into privacy, uh, then you'll probably think it's a good thing. So um, we shall see what happens with that. But not, uh, the cat's out of the bag anyway. Um, uh, it appears that uh, hackers have compromised a financial services firm. Um, I'm never really fond of, of the secrecy that they put around these things. It appears that the company is pro-tax, uh, although I can't guarantee that, but it looks like it is. Um, the hackers even cloned the company's website and are making the data available uh, to anyone. Uh, it's not on the dark web. It's just anyone. Um, I assume at some point in time, uh, the lawyers for whoever this company is, whether it's ProTax or somebody else, are going to go off and try to get the website taken down. But if this is in a bulletproof hosting environment, like in a place like Russia, you know, that's probably not likely going to happen. So um, you know, they can get a court to do that. They might even uh, be able to get uh, ISPs to go block traffic, but that's not really very effective for the most part. So, um, you know, if they're DNS providers in the United States, they could probably get the DNS provider to take it down. But, but anyway, that all that takes time and, and we shall see what happens there. Um, not good for them, obviously, but um, uh, one more time, you know, the, these hackers are pretty creative. Um, in uh, this week, this week, this year's uh, omnibus spending bill, the $1.7 trillion spending bill that Congress passed, there was a kind of a, there's always, there's always a smorgasbord of stuff that's inside it. In this case, there is a new law about medical devices. Uh, medical devices have been a hacker's wonderment because uh, currently today, they can't be patched and still um, retain their certification. If you patch the device, it has to go through the certification process again. Uh, this law uh, really kind of uh, put some teeth in how you deal with that. The, the uh, medical device makers 
when they submit a device for certification, will now be required to explain how they're going to go patch things and maintain their certification. Uh, they're going to require uh, software bill of material, one of the things we talked about a little while ago. They're going to require um, a bunch of stuff um, now that they never had to do with regard to security uh, under federal law. This this gives the FDA the clout it needs because one of the challenges the FDA has always had is, well, we don't have any authority to make you do this. So now they do. And hopefully they'll use that wisely. They also gave the FDA some money. So that's all good, too. Um, next, uh, hackers uh, uh, are turning to Google to figure out how to hack people. It's kind of kind of interesting. Um, they are doing things like creating uh, clones of real websites with cloned versions of uh, software. Uh, obviously, there's a little extra uh, in the clone software, which is malware. Um, but you know, if you look for a particular piece of software and you get to one of these malicious websites uh, instead of the real one, then uh, the result of that is that you're downloading malware. Uh, they're also using ads and, and they use a whole bunch of obfuscation techniques to make it unlikely that Google will detect that there's malware coming. So they're just using Google in a variety of different creative ways. Don't you love it when the hackers are creative? And, um, and the net effect of that is, of course, that people are getting infected. Um, next, our dear friends at T-Mobile who don't seem to be able to figure out how to secure their customers' data. Um, it was hacked for the eighth time in the last couple of years, three or four years. Um, and this time, uh, the hackers only got about 37 million customers uh, worth of data. Uh, the data is of the less sensitive variety, but it's great for phishing and or account takeover. Um, so <clears throat> it is a problem for T-Mobile. And I think T-Mobile customers at this point need to figure out whether the hassle of dealing with you know one or two breaches every single year is worth whatever benefits T-Mobile seems to claim to offer. Um, it would make me wonder for sure. Uh, and last in the uh, news bite section, uh, the New York governor finally, after six months, signed the right to repair law. The law got watered down a fair amount in the legislative process, but still it's a great start and, and it certainly helps things. Um, you know, vendors continue to be leaks week after week after week. They are the weak link. And for folks who don't haven't figured that out, they'll continue to have breaches for which obviously, you know, if your vendor uh, gets compromised, uh, you're the one who gets sued. So, um, Next, uh, Bitcoin developers, uh, one of the original developers of Bitcoins, uh, lost all of his Bitcoins to the tune of four plus million dollars worth of coin. Uh, not great for him. Uh, Netflix plans to crack down on uh, account fraud, um, which is people sharing passwords. A number of different ways they're talking about doing that. Uh, and I think <clears throat> obviously there will be some pushback from people who who think that you know, stealing uh, their services is a good thing. Obviously, uh, you know, it is a felony if you get caught at it. Uh, most people don't get prosecuted, but it is a felony. And, um, uh, you know, we shall see what happens here. But, but you know, they think, you know, Netflix says they have about 220, 230 million customers and about 100 million of those customers share passwords. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, in a way that's uh, not consistent with the license agreement. So we shall see what happens, but you know they're scratching for revenue. Um, and in terms of privacy bills for 2023, as I said, you know, anticipate a large number. There are about seven or eight new states uh, that have uh, already introduced privacy bills. This is only January, uh, so we got 11 more months. Expect to see um, you know more bills come in. Then we'll see which ones get passed and which ones don't. Um, and, uh, you know, in the G, how can we help you department? Um, you know, I'm not going to harp about third party risk very much, or I did a little bit instead. Um, you know, let's talk about uh, making sure that these devices that you're disposing of, whether they're everything from copiers and fax machines to phones are really wiped. And if you have a question about that, then please reach out to us and we'll be happy to help you. Uh, until next time, that's all. Thanks for listening. Stay safe.
Turnkey Cybersecurity and Privacy Solutions offers the complete cybersecurity program for small to medium-sized businesses. They include everything needed to secure your business and meet compliance requirements. Visit our website at turnkeycybersecurityandprivacysolutions.com to learn more.